jungle one, and this is the thing that he wants to do. Good morning. The February 28th meeting of the Board of Estimates is now called to order in the interest of promoting the order and efficiencies of these hearings. Persons who are disruptive to the hearings will be asked to leave the hearing room immediately. Meetings of the Board of Estimates are open to the public for the duration of the meeting. The hearing room must be vacated at the conclusion of the meeting. Failure to comply may result in a charge of trespassing. Madam Deputy Controller, are there any corrections, additions, or deferrals on the agenda? Good morning. For today's agenda, there were no protests received. There are two items that are being deferred, and those are pages three to four for one week, and pages 116 to 117 for one week. I have the following abstentions to note. There are no abstentions for the Honorable Mayor Pugh. The Honorable President Young will abstain on page 96, and the Honorable Comptroller Pratt will abstain on page 8 and page 9. The items that remain on the non-routine agenda are pages 120, item 1, and 120, item 2. Mr. President, members of the board, uh, those are the deferrals for this week, as well as the abstentions that have been reported thus far. Thank you. Thank you. I will direct the board members' attention to the memorandum from our office dated February 26, 2018, identifying matters to be considered as routine agenda items, together with any corrections and additions that have been noted by the deputy controller. I will entertain the motion to approve all of the items contained on the routine agenda. Mr. President, I move the board's approval of the routine items. Second. All those in favor say aye. aye. All opposed nay, the motion carries. The routine agenda has been adopted. The first item on the non-routine agenda can be found on page 120, item one, Department of Audits, Audit Reports, and Related Audit Digest, Department of General Service, Biannual Financial Audit for fiscal year 2015 and 2016. Will the parties please come forward? General services. General services right here. Oh, general services first? I need general services. Oh, general services on this page um, six. General services begin on page six, five, six. Page six. Excuse me. You gave it's on, down. But it's underneath it. It's okay. in it. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Oh, that's like the back. Oh, okay, it's two. Okay. <laughs> All right, I have it. Okay. Good morning, honorable board members. Audrey Askew, Deputy City Auditor. So if you turn to page six in your diagram, your presentation, mm -hmm. the first part is a summary of the um, financials for the Department of General Services. I will not go over them, but just to be give you a note, if you see a positive variance for revenues, that's, a, that's what you would like to have, so that's a positive thing. And if you have a negative expenditure, that's what you would like to see for the expenditure, just to give you a, just an overview, a overview of what you would want to see. So a positive variance on revenue and a negative variance is what you want to see on the expenditures. If you turn to the next page, page seven, current year findings, first finding is a finding on the vehicle maintenance and inventory controls. The finding relates to review of, per our review of the past maintenance compliance report, we disclosed 452 vehicles, we're talking about cars and trucks and equipment, bobcat, tractors, etc., were one to 15 years late in receiving scheduled maintenance, and 772 were 90 to one year late. We recommend that DGS escalate aged past maintenance activity and biannual inventory issues, example, to finance. 
finding two, controls over vehicle parts. The finding is fleet ex during our fleet expenditure testing, we noted supervisors and lead workers had the authority to initiate a repair order, assign work to themselves, authorize the acquisition of parts, and subsequently close the order. This can result in fictitious repair orders. Our recommendation is for the FASTA system to be upgraded, revised, to require technicians to accept the repair order within the system to permit continuation of the order. Technicians should initiate all requests for parts. Right. Finding three, controls over the system access. During our review of logical access controls over the FASTA system, we noted that the system's analyst has the authority to provide user access and perform day-to-day -day activities. Although the system does produce a report that details the updates, this system was not reviewed, which could result in assets being lost or stolen. Our recommendation to the system analysts that should be removed from processing transactions or manage a review um, of a sample of updates prepared by the system analysts. And then finally, our final, our finding four, controls over payroll records. During our audit, we noted numerous issues or concerns related to the controls over the payroll process, as you see detailed here. Um, and we recommend that training for recording and reporting time um, accuracy be, be for accuracy and completeness. Thank you. We've uh, accepted the findings and worked with audits to come up with good new processes to improve what we do. Okay. Uh, Madam Control. On finding number one, why were the vehicles um, so late in receiving maintenance? Is it so not all the vehicles necessarily needed maintenance, but we did do an audit two years ago, and all the agencies have said we have these vehicles in hand. Uh, now we are going to require during our next audit, which you do an audit of the vehicles every two years, that they show us the vehicle and bring it in for maintenance. So instead of just saying, do you have the vehicle or not, now we're going to say, show us the vehicle and bring it into Biddle Street, or else we don't believe you. Um, so that's pretty much it. Usually these aren't vehicles. Usually these are like trailers or small pieces at, for the most of the older ones. So instead of waiting two years, can you report back to the board in 90 days that you've taken a fiscal inventory of these vehicles? Uh, the, it will take longer than 90 days. I can come back in six months. Okay. Six months. Yeah. Okay. Please note in six months, um, DGS will come back with um, a report on the findings that uh, the controller have raised. Thank you. Department of Housing and Community Development. Julie. Julie. Excuse me for one minute. Yes, sir. <coughs> yes, it is. Page two again. Again, let's, let's, let's go back. Um, the second item on the non routine agenda is the Department of Housing and Community Development um, audit. Okay. Page two. Again, a summary of the reports that we reviewed and we are uh, opined on. Um, again, a positive variance on the total revenues is what you would like to see, and a negative variance on the expenditures, again, is, a, is what you would like to see. Page three, the current year findings. Finding one, inventory controls. 424 inventory additions and 413 inventory reduction sales were not recorded. DHCD does not obtain record reports from DPW related to inventory transactions on behalf of the State Department of Assessments and Taxation. Four items were not provided for testing. We recommend that DHCD obtain detailed inventory adjustments from DPW and retain supporting documentation. Finding two, property sales control. Controls were not in place to ensure checks from sale of city property and settlement of subsequently deposited. Too many staff handling checks prior to the deposit, many times up to four persons. Recommendation process to ensure all checks from sale of city property are subsequently deposited. Checks be submitted by one employee for deposit preparation and submission. Finding three, controls over property. Staff entering purchase of property transactions are also committed to acquire checks from accounts payable. 
recommendation segregation of duties for generating checks and subsequent accounts payable pickup. And then the final finding, finding four, controls over payroll records. Again, numerous items um, related to the controls over the payroll process, payroll um, um, time sheets as well. Recommendation training for recording and reporting time for accuracy and completeness. Good morning. Um, I'm Julie Day, the Acting Chief of Staff here on behalf of HCD. I would respond to each of the items in turn if I could with regard to number one, the inventory controls. The, there, this is like a static shot of what our inventory is and the, the report from DPW and HCD does not always coincide. The, every time we sell or purchase a property, notification is given to DPD, so, I'm sorry, not, we tell them too, but DPW is what I meant. So we, we report all of our inventory monthly to city stats. We have to work with DPW to make sure that the real property locator files are, are coincide with ours. We don't have access to those files. So I think the question is uh, 424 inventory additions and 413 inventory reductions. Where are they recorded? Because apparently when the auditor looks, there's no... They, as I understand the process of the audit, we report to the Comptroller's Office, actually, an annual report of what our inventory is and that the, there's fluctuations during the year that don't match up with what that final report is. So at what point, I guess the question comes, at what point do they match up? Oh, I'm sorry, at what point do they match up? The... <laughs> They should match up every day. I mean, what we have is, it's a matter of the records not, I mean, we know what we have in our inventory and what we report, DPW reports to the state, so all of those records. Walter Horton, Department of Real Estate. Uh, on, on transactions, when, whenever they make a transaction, they CC the Department of Real Estate, they CC the Law Department, when those transactions occur. Generally on a monthly basis, they, they send in those type of uh, information on transactional sales. So th we're being audited on a record that we don't have control over. We provide all the information. Okay. With regard to the records that were not found, I would note that there were these were transactions from 1977 and 1979. So they, the deeds are accurate. The deeds are still in our inventory. The properties are still in our inventory. We don't have the settlement documents from 40 years ago. Um, number two, the, I think there's actually just a misunderstanding of our process. When, it, when the auditor finds that we have too many people touching a process, it, really what we've done is cross train our staff so that if someone's absent or on vacation, we don't have a lag in our performance. It, but when on any given day, it's one person doing that function. Um, the same with the um, number three. Number four, with regard to the um, payroll, I th I, again, I think that um, this is a process that needs to be reviewed citywide. We went to e-time, we went paperless, and now we're being held accountable for not having the paper. There wasn't a standardized process or policy implemented. When we went paperless, mm -hmm. we do everything electronically. We shouldn't have to keep the paper, but we do need from either DHR or payroll yeah. or a policy. a policy so that every agency can be held to the same standard of practice. Okay. Okay. All right. Please, please note that both audits have been noted. There have been no more business before this board. We will recess until bid opening at 12 noon. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, can you please turn all electronic devices to the off position? This meeting is recorded. Thank you.
Good afternoon. Uh, the Board of Residents is now in session for the receiving and opening of bids. We apologize for the delay. We have a large opening. We have 10 bids to receive today and to be read, so we wanted to get some up before we started so we could keep going. I have some addenda to read today, and those are as follows. SC948, Brooklyn Water Pumping Station Rehabilitation and Fire Guard Chemical Feed. Please change the bid due date from February 28th to March 14, 2018. B5000 5293 Tandem Axle Tractors. Please change the bid due date from February 28th to March 14, 2017. Beef, I'm sorry. 20, I'm sorry, March 14, 2018. I, I apologize. <coughs> B5000530101. Liquid, <coughs> liquid oxygen. Please change the bid due date from February 21st to February 28th, 2018. B5. Yes, okay. Let me see because of this one that's going to be a second one. Today's the 20th. This is the one, this is the, one the second one, right? That is correct. Is correct. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. <coughs> and the last one is B5005103. Please change the bid due date from February 21st to March 14th, 2018. Those are the addendum for today. <coughs> so ordered. TR 03319, replacement of bridge number BC 3212, Harford Road over Herring Run. A bid bond is required if the amount is over $100,000. No Pref Industries Inc. with a bid bond.
eighteen million nine hundred ninety seven thousand sixty nine dollars. Allen Myers, Maryland, Inc., with a bid bond. Twenty million four hundred seventy seven thousand seven hundred seventy seven dollars. Wagman Heavy Civil Inc. with a bid bond. Twenty-three million three hundred thirty-two thousand seven hundred one dollars and eighty-three cents. Concrete General Inc. with a bid bond. Twenty one million four hundred twenty nine thousand one hundred fifty four dollars and ninety eight cents. Sure, this is 
Ciambro Corporation with a bid bond. Twenty million nine hundred ninety three thousand nine hundred ninety six dollars. Keywit Infrastructure South Company with a bid bond. Twenty four million three hundred thirty four thousand eight hundred sixty five dollars and thirty five cents. This is all these two. Next in volume two. These bids will be referred to the Department of Transportation for review. <laughs> yeah, yeah. TR 13310, Geometric Safety Improvements Phase 2. A bid bond is required if the amount is over $100,000. Monumental Paving and Excavating Inc. with a bid bond. Six hundred ninety nine thousand one hundred thirty four dollars and fifty seven cents.
Flanagan and Sons Incorporated with a bid bond. Eight hundred fifty nine thousand nine hundred seventy six dollars and twenty five cents. Civil Construction LLC with a bid bond. $579,717. Manuel Louise Construction Company, Inc. with a bid bond. One million one hundred twenty five thousand. One hundred dollars. ECM Corporation with a bid bond. Nine hundred eleven thousand six hundred ninety dollars. Machado Construction Company, Inc. with a bid bond. $854,230.50. Okay, these will be referred to the Department of Transportation for review. TR-16303, resurfacing Franklin Street from Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard to Edmondson Avenue. A bid bond is required if the amount is over $100,000. Manual Louise Construction Company, Inc. with a bid bond. 
P. Flanagan and Sons Incorporated with a bid bond. Three million four hundred ninety nine thousand six hundred seventy nine dollars. These will be referred to the Department of Transportation. RP one four eight one zero Clifton Tennis Courts and Parking Improvements. A bid bond is required if the amount is over one hundred thousand dollars. P Flanagan and Sons Incorporated with a bid bond. One million seven hundred seventy eight thousand eight hundred twenty five dollars. The American Asphalt Paving Company, LLC, with a bid bond. One million four hundred ninety-nine thousand. Nine hundred ninety eight dollars. Monumental Paving and Excavating Inc. with a bid bond.
Contractors Inc. with a bid bond. One million seven hundred forty eight thousand two hundred dollars. SM Properties LLC with a bid bond. One million seven hundred seventy four thousand sixty two dollars and seventy cents. These will be referred to the Department of Recreation and Parks for review. WC1370, AMI slash R, Urgent Need Metering Infrastructure Repair and Replacement, Various Locations, 3-inch and Larger Water Service. A bid bond is required if the amount is over $100,000. Midas Utilities, LLC, with a bid bond. Seven million. Four hundred thirty thousand eight hundred six dollars and forty eight cents. Metro Industries with a bid bond. Five million eight hundred sixty seven thousand two hundred seventy five dollars.
R.E. Harrington Plumbing and Heating with a bid bond. Six million six hundred thirty-two thousand six hundred dollars. J. Fletcher Kramer and Son, Inc. with a bid bond. Eight million two hundred three thousand eight hundred nine dollars and eighty cents. in the yellow companies with a bid bond. Nine million nine hundred seventy three thousand three hundred dollars. These will be referred to the Department of Public Works for review. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Thank you. GS 16816, Mitchell Courthouse Elevator Upgrade. A bid bond is required if the amount is over one hundred thousand dollars. Nichols Contracting Inc. with a bid bond two million six hundred forty five thousand six hundred dollars. W. M. Slosher Company, Inc. with a bid bond. Three million two hundred sixty-six thousand dollars. These will be referred to the Department of General Services for review. <coughs> B. 
5237 Parts and Repair Services for Muncie Pumps, Power Take-Offs, and Valves. A bid bond is not required. Yes, okay. Thank you. TRI BMS doing business as R and M Equipment Company. Two million seven hundred twenty five thousand dollars Waste Equipment Sales and Service LLC, two million four hundred eighty two thousand fifty one dollars and twenty eight cents. Intercon Truck of Baltimore doing business as Intercon Truck Equipment. One million two hundred seventy thousand dollars. Baltimore Hydraulics Inc. Okay, three hundred nine thousand. Three hundred nine million. Okay. 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 Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. Three hundred and one million four hundred twenty five thousand dollars. Three hundred one million. Three hundred one million four hundred twenty five thousand. Okay. Okay. Got it. Oops. These will be re these will be referred to the Bureau of Purchases for review.
B5005291. Ten ton tag along trailers. Five percent of the total bid is required as a bid bond. Thank you. Subject to verification. CNC Manufacturing Inc. Subject to verification of the bid bond on file with the Department of Finance. One hundred thirty one thousand nine hundred forty five dollars. Security company with a bid bond. Well, thank you so much. I, I misspoke. <coughs> Excuse me, that's security equipment company with a bid bond. One hundred twenty eight thousand five hundred ninety dollars.
Craftsman's Inc. Substitute verification of a bid bond on file with the Department of Finance. Valley Supply and Equipment Company, Inc., with a check, $146,300. Stefan L. Green Trailers with a check, $102,850. These bids will be referred to the Bureau of Purchases for review. B five zero 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 five two nine two rubber tire wheel loader with backhoe five percent of the total bid is required as a bid bond.
to the copies. Page nine. Sure. Jesco Inc. with a bid bond. $82,369. Oh, that's theirs too. Yes. I must have had to pick that clip. Oh, wait a minute. No, no. There's this one here. Valley Supply and Equipment Company, Inc., with a check, $76,645.51. Okay, these will be referred to the Bureau of Purchases for review. Zero 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 five three zero one liquid oxygen. A bid bond is not required. Prax Air Inc. fifty one thousand seven hundred fifty dollars. So okay. this will be referred to Bureau of Purchases for review. Okay. Sorry about all my erasures today. Thank you all very much. There being no further business, we are adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>